After watching America's Sweethearts, the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders on Netflix, I had to come on here and break this thing down for y'all because there's tons of things that I need to talk to you guys about from a licensed therapist perspective. Hey, hey, everybody, if you are new here, welcome. But if you are a returning subscriber, you already know how my review videos go. Full disclaimer, there will be spoilers all up through and around this thing. So if you have not watched it, press pause, go on over to Netflix. It's about seven episodes long. It's worth it. And come back and chat with us in the comments because we got a lot to talk about. But before we get into the five things that I want to talk to you guys about, put in the comment section, what did you think about this whole entire series? What did you think about the cheerleaders, Kelly, Judy, the Cowboys franchise, and so on and so forth. And if there's anything in this video that I did not fully cover, put it in the comment section so we can continue the dialogue. The first thing that we have to talk about is these unrealistic beauty standards. Now, these women were talented. They were consistent. They were amazing. They were smart. They were beautiful, obviously. But there are so many things that were put on them that were expected of them that just wasn't realistic. And it caused them so much more damage than what they really should have been going through. But we're going to talk about that a little later. They mentioned time and time again that you have to look like a supermodel but perform like an athlete. And we've seen that to precision throughout every single episode. I mean, the women were beautiful, obviously. I'm talking about from hair, from body, to makeup, to personality. They really seem like great individuals, if I'm being honest with you, even though I don't know any of them. But to expect someone to be on 24-7, it's not realistic, it's not real. It does some damaging things to you when you have to be in full hair and full makeup and full all of the things, even in practice. I didn't understand why that needed to be the case. On game day, on appearances, for sure, but why do I need to be caked up, makeup up, and perfect in practice? That's too much. And I mean, it wasn't just the makeup and hair that was an issue, but it was your body having to be on point at all times. Ladies, in the comment section, y'all know that our bodies fluctuate every single day, every single week throughout our menstrual cycle when we're on, when we're off. There's only like a week out of the whole entire month when our body isn't doing something funky. So we have bloating, we have, you know, puffiness, we have pain and cramps and all of these different symptoms that the average woman typically has. And so it was like those things didn't matter. It was like, girl, you need to show up and be perfect 24 seven. Yikes. And I couldn't help but think, sorry, fellas, but for those little white shorts that they got on, I said, I can't even begin to think to want to wear some white shorts when I'm on my menstrual cycle. I can't even understand how they're doing it. While we're on this whole uniform thing, it bothered my soul that how you looked in the uniform determined the fate of you being a DCC. It was like, you can be amazing, you can be a great dancer, you can have a great personality, you can look beautiful, but if that uniform doesn't fit right on your body and on your body type, you are cut from the team. And the ones who, I can say wasn't the best or didn't dance the best or maybe even wasn't the prettiest, but the uniform fit to the T on them, I felt like they got a pass in a good way. If I'm being honest with you, all of this felt very abusive. Like there's just no way that you can maintain a standard like this 24 seven. And we see the decline of every single woman's mental health and everything that they're going through slowly deteriorate over this whole entire season. While I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, race was a huge thing too. I can't tell you how many times Kelly was like, oh, is, is she Indian? What's her race? Oh, her face is too chunky. Oh, what is... I'm not even gonna go there, but y'all know what I'm talking about. If I'm not mistaken, there was only like one or two black women on the team and one was a very dark skinned black woman, which we love, but I also felt like her tights and her leggings that she wore underneath her uniform did not match her skin tone. It made her look ashy and crusty. And if you are a black woman, especially a dark skinned black woman amongst non-melanated individuals, you want to be as on point as possible and you need to make sure that your uniform and how you're showing up and what you got on your body is as beautiful on you as it is on other people. The second thing that we have to talk about is a loss of identity. 
I can't tell you from episode one all the way to episode seven, I was like, these women are going through an identity crisis. It seems like they knew themselves well, wanting to be a part of DCC, wanting to be on the team, auditioning, doing all of those things. A lot of them had amazing careers. They were orthodontists and in the finance field and doing all of these great things. But it seemed like as soon as they got in DCC, the pilling of themselves started to happen the downfall of themselves started to happen. Someone said, you don't make the cheerleading team by being yourself, you become a whole different person. And when she said that, my heart broke for her because no one should have to change themselves, their personality, their beliefs, their wants, needs, goals, and desires to fit in anywhere. You should want me just for who I am. And this was clear to me while the women were in DCC and also after they left. While they were in DCC, they were constantly questioning themselves. Am I good enough? Am I pretty enough? I'm comparing myself to the other person or the outside world. I want to please Kelly and Judy. I want to do all of those things. And it's just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. When at any point are you going to make yourself priority? The question that I kept seeing looming throughout every episode was, who am I? It takes a lot of guts to devote yourself to something for a whole year or even multiple years if you want to come back to be a vet versus being a rookie. So I understand what the process is like and what it entails, but I'm not sure if this is the healthiest option for any of the ladies now in the past or in the future. And after they left DCC, whether they retired out or they chose not to come back for another season, it was very apparent that they didn't know who they were. They lost themselves, didn't know what they wanted to do next in their career. They didn't know what the next phase of their journey is going to look like. They didn't know because they were so locked and loaded and did all of the DCC things and devoted their whole life, morning, afternoon, and night to DCC, that when that was taken away from them and stripped away from them, they didn't even know who they were anymore or what they wanted to do moving forward. And this is for those who were even clear about their own goals, needs, passions, and desires prior to getting into DCC. This organization and how it's ran, it does something to you and not necessarily in the nicest way. And to give it a little bit of a plot twist, I feel like the girls idolized Kelly and Judy. It was like they were gods and whatever they said goes. I mean, you can't even count how many times they were like, yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, ma'am. Like no one could tell any of them no. And at some point, somebody got to understand that they cannot be right 100% of the time. So it was like an idol, like DCC was an idol for them. Kelly and Judy was an idol for them. The Cowboys franchise was an idol for them. If I'm being honest, Kelly and Judy also had an identity crisis. They didn't know who they were either. They were so tapped into devoting themselves and their lives to this organization that they lost out on multiple key moments in their own life, in their own marriages, in their own children's lives to serve these women. We seen Kelly break down crying when she was getting her makeup done when her daughter called her, wanted her to spend some quality time with her because she was going to go shopping for wedding dresses. And it was almost as if Kelly either didn't know she was getting married or it felt like she was being left out of the wedding process because she was so busy with DCC. You have to put things into perspective. What really matters? Is it DCC in your job or is it the fact that your daughter needs for you to be there and be present? As much as we talk about the DCCs not having an identity, I feel like Kelly and Judy was losing theirs too. The third thing that we have to talk about is finances. I was blown away that these women were not being thoroughly compensated for their time, their energy, and their effort. Now, from what I've heard and from what I've read, the NFL period does not pay cheerleaders well. There's been tons of lawsuits and tons of people speaking up about this very thing, but that still don't make it right. One of the girls literally said, I basically get paid like a full-time Chick-fil-A worker. And I'm like, girl, what? You are spending 11 and 12 hours on game days. You are spending countless times going from work to practice, staying up, not sleeping, not eating, doing all of these things, and you're not thoroughly compensated? What? 
It's really sad to think about because it seemed like a lot of the women were struggling financially in some capacity. We see Ann Kate and her sister sleeping in the same bed, you know, and I'm not sure if that was for financial reasons, but just examples like that really shows like, whoa, why aren't these women given enough money? The Cowboys ain't poor. <laughs> DCC also ain't poor. So why aren't you compensating the women who are your money makers? And I like to think of it like this before I move on to my next point. If you compensate the women thoroughly, they have more financial resources to make sure that they're housing and that they're eating well and that they're working out and that they can go to therapy and that their mental health is taken care of. They are going to be overall better human beings because they're not worried about money. So they're going to show up better at practices. They're going to be giving 110%. They're going to be in a better state of mental health just off the sheer fact that they ain't worried about them bills. As a side note, I just wanted to let you guys know that I am not a sports girl. <laughs> like NFL, NBA, any types of sports is not my thing. I didn't even want to watch this series until multiple people reached out to me like, oh my God, Keandra, this is so good. Please review this, please watch it. And when I did, I was glad that I did because it really had some elements that I wanted to talk to you guys and break down from a therapist's perspective. Please forgive me if I am ignorant of the Cowboys franchise or the football league or the whatever, the organization. If there's some things that I misspoke or said anything wrong about, please feel free to correct me in the comment section. The fourth thing we have to talk about is mental health. There was no way I was doing a video about this and not include mental health in there. I seen the deterioration of every single girl from the rookies to the auditions, which was also weird. Like y'all were performing in front of the other folks and then y'all had random judges there that didn't have anything to do with anything. Why is the news guy and a meteorologist a judge? Anywho, it was very clear to me that these women were not in the tip top shape that they needed to be in mentally. I'm wondering if a psych evaluation would be something that they can incorporate into this even in the audition phase. We want women that are going to be mentally stable and mentally well. We've seen them not being mentally well. We've seen bits and pieces of people having maybe undiagnosed eating disorders because they wanted to show up and be perfect in their uniform. They were either binge eating or not eating enough. And it was like, you can't be too big and you can't be too small. You can't lose weight. You can't gain weight. Do you know how hard it is to maintain the same weight throughout days and months consistently with without any fluctuation is not normal. To think that these women didn't have financial strains or family issues was absurd. We seen all of the cheer mom, I'm gonna call them cheer moms, <laughs> because a lot of those who were in DCC, their parents were in DCC or they were friends with Kelly and Judy. And so it was just a very weird dynamic. But imposter syndrome, lack of confidence, lack of self-esteem, lack of self-love, body image issues. We've seen the gamut throughout these episodes. But the two things that I want to land on before I move to my next point was them being over-sexualized because they are so beautiful. Obviously, men are drooling over them, whether that is at the games or at their additional appearances, but they are basically seen as like sex symbols. And while that's cool, it's also kind of scary because it put them in very unsafe situations. We've seen countless times where they talked about how they need to make sure that the men don't touch them when they're getting pictures taken with them. We've seen one of the ladies getting touched inappropriately at a game. We've seen one of the ladies talk about how her life was threatened. We've seen someone put an air tag and follow and stalk one of the cheerleaders. All of these things are traumatic and it leads to trauma. And when things like this happen and it's just like, well, that's a part of DCC. This is a privilege to be here. It's a privilege and an honor to be a part of something like this. 
and you don't have any coping skills or you don't have the support on the level that it's supposed to be on, you feel like you're by yourself, but you also feel like you can't speak up because then people are going to blame you. They're going to think that you're not grateful to be here and it's going to put a rift in between the relationship between you and them. Nobody should be pushing themselves to exhaustion. Nobody should be running on three hours of sleep every single day, rushing from your full-time job where you just worked 11, 12 hours, coming home real quick, eating, rushing to practice, staying there late, and then getting home and doing that all over again. You have no entire life. I don't know if I could have taken it. So all of them need to go to therapy. Kelly, Judy, y'all need to go to therapy. All of the DCC cheerleaders, therapy. It should be a part of the process. And the Cowboys organization should pay for it too. And I'm talking about while they're in DCC and also after they leave DCC because obviously this has a lasting impact on their lives. Either they are doing extremely well after they leave DCC or they're doing extremely bad after they leave DCC. It feels like there's no middle ground. The fifth thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about before I give my final thoughts and predictions for another season is community. I initially thought that it was weird for all of the rookies who kind of just met each other to feel like they were just BFFs. Like I just met you a week ago and we're best friends and we are lovey-dovey and I love you forever. But then when I sat and thought about it, I thought about spending multiple hours and multiple days with the same people experiencing the same things you do build a very authentic relationship with each other, let alone the vets who have been in this thing multiple years with the same folks. It does feel like a family and a community. If I'm being honest, I'm glad that they have each other because they are going through very similar things and it feels like those that are not in DCC, whether that's family, friends, or people in the community, other people may not be able to understand what they're going through because they just not in it. The sad thing to me watching this is once you are done with DCC, whether you choose to leave and not continue on or your five years is up, you lose all of your BFFs. Think about it, to be in a close knit community with however, what, 34, 36 of them, all of those people that you have connected with are taken away from you at one time, that's a dagger to the heart. And if we're being honest, this is going to cause them to experience loss and grief. And I haven't fully talked about the five stages of grief here, but this also happens when you lose relationships. You go through the same cycle, kind of as if what you would go through when someone passes away. You might be in denial, you might be in depression, you might feel anger, you might feel acceptance. You go through all of those processes and it's very fluid. It's not a linear thing. So one day you might be feeling like, I can't believe this is over in denial. And the next day you might be angry. And then the next day after that, you might be sad. And then you might come to a place of acceptance and saying, hey, it is what it is. But this goes back to my point of them needing therapy before, during, and after. So my final thoughts on this is though, even though watching this season was very intense, I realized that a lot of the key players and the main folks that were mentioned in this story, they're still human. You know, I think about Victoria and from the very first episode, she was smiling while talking about things that were hard, that were difficult and that weren't even happy things. And I said, something is wrong with her because her affect is off. You shouldn't be smiling, <laughs> talking about death. Right? Like, that's just an example, even though that didn't happen. But these women went through suicide, and you know, one of the girls lost her father by suicide, and a lot of them are, were married and engaged, and they really put their lives on hold for this organization. And we can argue, like, well, you signed up for this, you auditioned for this, you wanted this, so whatever it brings, you just got to deal with it. But also, I completely understood why people would want to be a part of this. At first I had a hard time. I was like, why are they doing this? For what, you know, <laughs> what is the point of this? But then I thought about just even in my own life for the things and the passions and the goals that I have that are not associated with, you know, anything as far as NFL and BCC and anything of that nature. I was like, oh, I understand why you will want to keep going and not give up and push forward and do what you gotta do. Like I get it from a different standpoint, but I think people who don't have goals, who don't have you know anything to strive for, that might be very hard for them to comprehend. 
even though Kelly and Judy wasn't my favorite people, I think from the first episode, I was like, I don't like them. <laughs> this is too much. Just giving a little bit of racism here. They're too hard. They're too stern. Like, chill out. I got to see them in a softer light as the episodes progress. If I'm keeping it in a hundred, Kelly is very creative. The fact that she built this fran well, she didn't build the franchise, but the fact that she has consistently started implementing new ideas and ways for them to show up during the holiday thing, having them have Barbie dolls and having, you know, glow in the dark pom-poms and glow in the dark boots and, you know, all of these things. She's constantly thinking about new ways, one, to bring in revenue, but also two, to kind of just switch the game up and not make it boring. Now, based on some Reddit, stuff that I've read and other comments from you all on other videos, y'all told me that there was a lot going on in the Cowboys franchise and not in a good way. And so this series and this show has been pushed to the forefront to try to help them show DCC and the Cowboys organization in a more positive light. There's a lot of sexism happening. There's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that just hasn't been pretty. And we've seen a lot of it in this show. But if I'm being honest, I wanted more realness from them. Y'all know me, I'm a realist. It's like, tell me like it is. I felt that a lot of the women, even in their interviews and the things that they were saying on the show, like they were holding back a little bit. They weren't fully 100% honest. They were giving a little piece of information, but then, you know, withdrawing. And it felt like they were scared to be honest. They felt like if they said too much, maybe Kelly and Judy wouldn't be happy or they would be removed from the team or they didn't want the Cowboys franchise or the organization to, you know, have a, a negative impact based on what they've said. Nevertheless, I felt that very intensely. And my predictions on this is that there will be another season. I was thinking like, maybe there wouldn't be, but as consistently as this has been in the top 10 on Netflix, for I feel like months at this point, it really shows that a lot of you guys are watching it. It's really good. And it is a money maker and a revenue situation for them. So why wouldn't they come back for another season? Now, I'm not sure if it will be the same cast for the new set of DCC cheerleaders, but nevertheless, I think that there will be another season of this. I mean, heck, they had another show back in 20, what, 18, 2019 called DCC Making the Team. So this isn't their first rodeo, pun intended. You get it, Cowboy Texas Road? Anywho, this isn't their first run in regards to TV and reality TV shows. So thank you so much for watching another review on my channel. Please make sure to stick around, comment, subscribe, stay connected. And look, let me know what you guys thought about this and if I missed anything. But until next time, I will see you soon. Be blessed.